Okay, welcome to Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, November 10th, and we're continuing talking about whosoever will. You got to check out Monday and Tuesday. I can't do a lot of backtracking because I want to get this all the way, um, you know, finished. Um, tonight we're having service. It's our Wednesday night service at my father's house starting at six o'clock. Pastor Jose is ministering. He's back. Pastor Jose is back and he's ministering the Word of God, and it's very special. So, Check it out. Make it in person if you can. If not, check us out at mfhlv.com. If you want to give to Work of God, to the Work of God at my father's house, on the Shop Now button, you would hit that button. It'll take you to our website at mfhlv.com, my father's house, Las Vegas. We are at Isaiah 55. Whosoever will. We talked about the sure mercies of David yesterday. I'll read that verse and verse 4. This is really cool. Incline your ear, verse 3, Isaiah 55, 3, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant or relationship with you, even the sure mercies of David. I want to read verse 4 before we break that down. Behold, just like he started in verse 1, ho, pay attention. Here's a different way of saying it. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Let's read a little bit about this David and how it relates to something eternal. We're looking at Acts chapter 13, verse 36 and 37. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Well, where's the sure mercy in that? Where's the eternity in that? We read yesterday, Psalm 89, 28, talking about David. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. My covenant shall stand with him. Well, David... Jesus is of the lineage of David. And look at this. It explains how in Acts 13, 36, David, after, notice, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. Let me park on that just for a moment. Men, women, children, whosoever. <laughs> Here's an example for us of being a witness and of a leadership to the people, he served his own generation by the will of God. What was David here for? Um, God made him this great warrior and leader and commander to the people of Israel, a witness to the people of a relationship with God. His purpose was to serve his own generation. What's your purpose and my purpose? We read to serve his own generation by the will of God. You know, we're a light to our generation, our own generation. Not necessarily the past, maybe the future, if somebody records something for us. But this generation, we're born into this generation, this culture, this planet, this earth, this America, or wherever you're listening or hearing from. And we're to serve our generation. Serve our generation? How? By the will of God. We're talking about the sure mercies of David. We're talking about whosoever will. Well, let me get back to it. For David, after he, served his own, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid into his fathers and saw corruption. Yet we had read in Revelations, I'm sorry, we had read in Psalms 89, 28, concerning mercy, and eternity and everlastingness. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore for David. My covenant shall stand with him. But we just read that he fell on sleep. David the man died, was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. Verse 37, but he, Jesus is the he and he's for the whosoever and that's me and you. <laughs> 
whom God raised again. See, Jesus saw death also. But this is where the everlasting relationship and the sure mercies of David come in. Whom God raised again saw no corruption. He did not, his body was not consumed. His body was raised. The wounded, bruised, bleeding, knows what it feels like for me and you, was tempted in every way. A man, a woman, a person could be tempted, but did not give in so he could become the perfect sacrifice, laid down his own will to obey the Father's will for you and for me so we could have sure mercies and an everlasting relationship. But never forget, he did it out of his will. See, it's without price because he paid the price. The Bible says in, in Adam, all died, right? Adam, original sin. I don't know if that's original sin, but he's the one that disobeyed God and everybody suffered because of it, all died. So in Christ, if one man, all are judged and guilty and sin reigns, why can't it be by one man, all can be redeemed? Fair is fair, right? What the enemy thought for evil, God turns for good using the same trick back on the, you know, flip the script. Even so, by one man can everybody be redeemed. There is no name greater than the name of Jesus. God gave him a name. Think about this. He has a name that is above every other name. Not just at the end of time, but right now. Jesus who split time in half. Jesus by whom we count our days as BC, before Christ, AD, um, in the year of our Lord. <laughs> now, there may be a culture or a generation that wants to do, with, with how, with, do away with how we um, conduct time because they want to rebel against something God has already done. But they're dealing with eternity here. They're dealing with a name that is above every name. It's above every culture, any name that will be named. The next culture and generation coming up that tries to change things will still have to deal with the name that is above them. God gave him a name because he earned it. The price has been paid for us. That's why we can come, everyone and whosoever will, and buy with our will, the living water, wine. Wine to pour into a wound and bring healing. Milk without money, without price, because Jesus paid the price for whosoever will. If that's you, say, Lord Jesus, you love me. You came to save me, and I'm a whosoever, and I will. I receive the price you paid for me. Forgive and cleanse me, and turn it all around. That's where we hear, and then we obey, and we turn. To Jesus. How do you turn away from sin? Turn to Jesus. How do you turn away from the thing that's tempting you? Turn to Jesus. It's not so much what you leave, it's what you're going for. <laughs> it's not so much what you're giving up, it's what you're receiving. You open your hands to let go of the past so you can receive. Because that's how your soul gets fed. That's how you buy this stuff. And it's for whosoever. Tomorrow's going to be Veterans Day. We won't have a lunch break because um, we always give uh, the holidays in deference to uh, the respect of those people who served. You know, we're all called to do that. 
we're called to serve in God's kingdom. Jesus paid the price so we can. See you on Friday. Have a great holiday and happy Veterans Day. God bless our vets. Now it's time for us to serve them, huh? Let's serve them as unto the Lord.